We go to the snake pit with Jake Roberts. Oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> Jake Roberts is there. He was? Yeah, <laughs> he is. That was Don Johnson, sir. <laughs> he was just standing there, I remember. And uh, he's standing there in his white jacket, his Cartier watch, his tiny little fucking thing on his wrist, his goddamn mustache. And he's there because the guest on the snake pit is Kamala, Kimchi, and... The wizard. The wizard. Who is Curtis Iakea? Okay. Now, for those of you that have seen a lot of uh, Curtis Iakea, a fucking maniac. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. the most That's clear. <laughs> maniacal, wacky, crazy promos. Was there any side of his head that wasn't gigged? <laughs> and uh, Seriously. He is just fucking ranting about Kamala. Yeah. I, I forget how far he said. He said some ridiculous, like... 22,000 miles! 22,000 miles. He is... Was he from the fucking moon? The Earth is only 8,000 miles like, around. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? 22,000 miles? Every single word. We talked about loudness in this show. He's bellowing at oh the my God. absolute top of his and lungs. And the best part is Jake the fucking Snake Roberts can not keep a straight face. Mm-hmm. He is fucking <laughs> laughing at this guy because he's such a fucking maniac. And he's just going fucking nuts. And finally, they have to hit the fucking music, <laughs> get the hook for this guy. And Jake goes, I'll be back. He's dying. I, this was worth a whole month of WWE Challenge from 1986. I was dying at this segment. God. He, Fuck, it was amazing. Jake is fighting Ivor to get a word in edgewise here. And Curtis is just yelling. His mouth is this wide. He's so loud. I went to Uganda to find the biggest headhunter of them all. Oh, you went to Uganda? What was- the mighty Kamala was on the northern slopes of Kilimanjaro hunting pygmies. <laughs> I'm crying laughing at all this. Pygmies. Yeah. Did we mention, by the way, that he was the- in? He was on Kilimanjaro. <laughs> hunting yeah. Pygmies. Naked. Apparently. Wearing that. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Did we mention the snake pit? It's just, there's a big rocky background. There's like ferns and moss and stuff, and that's also fine. But in front of Jake is this huge cauldron of boiling yes. water. <laughs> yeah. What the hell was that? Was he cooking dinner for Damien? Because snakes eat raw food, I believe. It is time for the Harley Race coronation. And then he explains that he heard about Kamala from a relative of Damien. He was talking to snakes. Yes. The snakes told him that Kamala was on the northern... What the fuck did he the say? The northern slopes the of Kilimanjaro. The northern slopes of Kilimanjaro hunting pygmies. <laughs> I was like, what in the fuck are you talking about? There's pygmies on Kilimanjaro. Kamala's there nude on a fucking snowy mountain. What? 48,000 fucking miles away. <laughs> what the fuck was this promo? It's awesome. It's what's missing in wrestling nowadays yes! is what it was. <laughs> that is true. We need more madmen. More lunatics. Oh, this guy lunatics. was a lunatic. Yes. When you crack Jake Roberts repeatedly, not just once. The cocaine in the 80s must have been awesome. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. The Harley Race coronation. So they have all the B-team heels in the ring. The Moondogs are out there. This was the stud. most nothing happening bullshit I ever saw. <laughs> it was like the heels are out there. They go, oh, here he comes. They played Lawler's music. He comes out. They put a fucking crown on him, and that's it. They carried him out. I was like, I, that's it. That was what I waited for. That's the fucking coronation. And I'm looking at, at you know, Harley. Mm-hmm. I'm like, God damn, looks great for 60. And I realize he's 43. Yeah. What? Yep. He's five years younger in this segment than I am now. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> like, yes. What? Yeah. Jesus. That was a hard life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for, for the record, yes, there was a King of the Ring tournament that year, and Harley Race defeated George Steele, Billy Jack Haynes, and Peter Morales to win. I did like the uh, brain reading the proclamation, though, mm-hmm. before the... Yeah, I know who wrote that thing. Hear ye, hear ye! This was total Vince verbiage. God. How handsome he is, and the, yeah. Well, handsome, handsome Harley Race had been his name. 
Yeah. And, uh, but there was yeah. like no angle. No. Nobody came out to steal the crown. Nobody no. came out looking for revenge. He's the king now. No heel turned. No. I was like, wow. And then Bobby Singh is like, you've all seen royal coronations, presidential elections. Well, you've seen nothing like what you're about to see. <laughs> like, all right. I went to the ice cream shop today. It was way more exciting than that fucking coronation. <laughs> So we get maybe 15 seconds telling us Captain Lou has brought the machines to the WWF. Oh, here's a great one. So, yeah, they go, he's brought the machines here. And they've got a quick video package of the machines, one of which is giant machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andre the fucking giant in a mask. And they show him, like, walking, and fuck, this guy can barely get on the apron to get in the ring. He doesn't go up the stairs. And he gets in the ring, and they cut away. And they come back for a ring announcement, and I thought, okay, well, I guess the machines are wrestling, nope. but it has nothing to do with the machines. This nope. was, this was, I swear to God, it was no longer than ten seconds yep. at best. Okay, yep. so the story of the machines is that uh, Andre had to film the Princess Bride, and so they had to, you know, well, gotta get, find a way to get rid of this guy. So they they did a deal where Heenan uh, challenged him and somebody for a tag match. And he no showed, mm -hmm. and so he was suspended by Jack Tunney. Okay, so then he finishes the movie, and so the giant machine shows up because Andre's been suspended, and so Heenan says, "Well, that's Andre the Giant," and so they literally did what they did in like 2005 with Hulk Hogan and Mr. America. Yeah, and it was like, "Well, if you can prove that it's Andre the Giant, he'll be fired." So they do all the rigmarole and they. Can't prove it's Andre the Giant, even though, it, of course, it fucking is. No one else is like that. And then, uh, finally, one day, the giant machine vanishes, and then uh, Andre just shows back up. But the storyline was, Andre just comes back, but Bobby Heenan doesn't complain about it. Which, of course, led to Andre turning heel with Bobby Heenan to lead to the 1987 WrestleMania. That's right. The only time I ever saw Under the Giant live was as a machine, unfortunately. It always amused me that they took the masked superstar, and he was super super machine. Big Blackjack Mulligan was big machine, and Under the Giant was giant machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really weren't trying. No. Well, fucking Mr. America. That's the that's, that's well, that's, comedy. That's well, the awesome. mid, that's, talk yes. about the Midnight Rider. You're supposed to know exactly who it is. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. That's true. Moondog Rex and Moondog Spot versus the British Bulldogs. I have no idea why this is a non-title match, actually. But uh, oh. I had low expectations for this. And it was like a four-minute TV match. I don't want to go crazy. But I thought the Moondogs were just going to stomp and choke. I like to do nerf pinches. No, they were a totally fine heel tag team. Mm -hmm. they, did some, they did some stuff. They were, they were trained wrestlers, despite their, you know, the gimmick and the bones and the holes in the jeans and all that. Uh, they did fuck up the timing for Davey Boy's hot tag. It totally kills his momentum. Mm -hmm. It was basically Sumito running in and shouting, I'm a house of fire, there's no one to hit. But they got back together and it broke down to four-way and Davey Boy jumps over Dynamite and Spot to pin Rex with a high cross. It was a fun TV tag match. You know, two things. First off, Moondog Spot, one of the rare guys who died in the ring. Mm. 15 years later, doing an indie show and they were doing like a, uh, like a Tupelo concession stand brawl type deal. Lawler was there and uh, he just sat down in the ring and died. Heart attack. And, uh, you know, they were like, he was just wrestling fine, and then that was it. So hmm. he's gone. And then the other thing about this match is uh, officially, officially, Dynamite Kid got badly injured two months later, uh, which necessitated back surgery, I recall. I think it was back surgery. But anyway, his, his, his big injury was allegedly December of 1986. This was what, September? Yeah. This fucking guy couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything in this match. He did like one drop kick, which he could barely jump. And he landed and he fucking couldn't. I mean, he was done. He was totally done in this match. And I I mean, that might have been the official straw that broke the camera's ba uh, camel's back in, in December. But this guy was long past fucked at this point. I mean, his back was shot in this match here. He did nothing in this match. We were talking earlier about um, uh, Nick Wayne's mom watching those Buddy Wayne match with um, 
Steamboat. Uh, Steamboat. Mm. And then you guys were watching Buddy Wayne matches. Well, I was watching this and when I thought uh, Moondog Moon, Moon, Moon Spot looked like uh, Sony Edwards. And that's what I looked up uh, when oh. I was sending that and off. That's where to, that came from? To Vinny, Mo- yeah. Uh, Moondog Spot was significantly better than Sony Edwards. No, no, I meant looked like him. Mm, yeah. I mean, Man, I would like him, I guess. The, he he was a male, <laughs> scruffy yeah. looking. Yeah. See, yeah. he he was the after picture of Stony Edwards before. I mean, I haven't seen that guy in twenty four years. You know what? I haven't either, and it's vividly. I think it's because we put that in the uh, how shoulders. You, no, it was a you, tour of F four W headquarters. Yes, yes. So yes. I've seen I've seen on you've uh, seen Stony seven thousand times. Yeah, Twitch because they played during the commercials. So I've seen me making fun of that match over and over again, and he dumped the popcorn on my head. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, uh, they were into the Road Warriors and the uh, Rock and Roll Express and, you know, the Midnight Express and all that. The Bulldogs were my team, man. I oh, love I was, the Bulldogs. I was a Bulldogs mark before I got into Demolition. I had a, I had a Bulldogs t-shirt and the, yeah. the Union Jack with a Bulldog in the middle and those red sleeves. And yeah, yeah, the, the baseball jersey. Uh, it was a, it may have been a rugby shirt. It had, like, weird mid-length sleeves. Yes. Like, like, right yeah, the yeah. elbow, which I actually drove one. me... I drove me completely insane. Like, make these longer or shorter. Just pick one. You know, that reminds me, by the way, that tour of uh, F4W headquarters, I was living in a one-bedroom apartment, and we went to a giant house that was going to be the uh, alleged headquarters. Yeah, that was yeah. that was your, your my parents' house. Yeah, yeah, it was your parents' house. Yeah. And actually, it was multiple houses because some of it we filmed in my one-bedroom apartment. Some of them, I, I just, like, the outside of the house was just some rando's house. We drove up in front of it and then filmed the car rolling back down the hill. I have forgotten And that. then the inside of the house was your parents' house. Yes. And also my one-bedroom apartment. So, yeah. Okay. That's when I had my purple Kia. What a fucking mistake that was. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.